Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 91 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam, and today we're going through one of my favourite topics, trigonometry, or I like to call it trigonometry. I like to be positive and call it trigonometry. Um, but today we're going to do trigonometry, and not only is it an important topic for its own sake, so it might be that you have a trigonometry question, it might be that there's a question in context, and you might be able to you know, apply trigonometry to that question in context, but also whenever you're looking at topics such as 3D trigonometry, it's important that you can obviously do trigonometry in 2D before you do trigonometry in 3D. If you've got the revision cards, there's a revision card on trigonometry, so have a look at that as well, and that might be useful for you. But in this video, I'm going to go through trigonometry. I'm going to go through how to answer some questions, and there'll be a chance for you to do some yourself, so feel free to pause the video and to try the questions, see how you get on as well. Um, but I hope you find this video useful, so let's get started. And that's it, so that's trigonometry. We've gone through how to do our trigonometry questions. Hi, today we're going to be looking at trigonometry. Now, we use trigonometry whenever we're dealing with right angle triangles, and we'll either be using the lengths of two of the sides to be working out the size of one of the angles, or we'll be using the size of one of the angles and a side to work out the length of another side. Now, it's important whenever we're doing trigonometry that you know your trigonometric ratios, your trig ratios, and they are that the sine is equal to the opposite divided by hypotenuse, the cos is equal to the adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and the tan is equal to the opposite divided by adjacent. So these are very important that you learn them. Some students remember saying such as Sokatoa, or I like to remember them as two old angels skipped over heaven carrying a harp. So let's have a look at this first question. So here we've got a right angle triangle. You can see it's a right angle triangle. And we've got the length of two of the sides. So the height of the triangle is 15 centimetres and the length of this diagonal is 20 centimetres. And we've been asked to find the size of this angle X. So if we wanted to find the size of this angle X, the first thing we'd want to do is to label the sides of the right angle triangle. So let's label the sides. So here we've got the right angle. So the side opposite it is called the hypotenuse. So that's our H. We've got the angle X that we're trying to find, so the side opposite it will be called the opposite, so that's O. And then the other side, the one that's left, or the one beside the angle we're trying to find, is called the adjacent. So we've labelled the sides. Now, whenever we're dealing with trigonometry questions, we'll only ever be using two of those sides. Either we'll know two of them, and we don't actually need to use the other one, or that we know one and we're trying to find one, but there'll be one of them that's not involved. So in this question, as you can see, we're going to be using the opposite, it's 15 centimetres. We're going to be using the hypotenuse, it's 20 centimetres. But we're not going to be using the adjacent, so we can cross that out. So we're not using the adjacent in this question. So now let's jot down our trigonometric ratios. So that's your Sokatoa, or your two old angels skipped over heaven carrying a harp. So I'm going to use that one, two old angels. So tan is equal to the opposite divided by adjacent, two old angels skipped over heaven. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse carrying a harp. Cos is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse. So two old angels skipped over heaven carrying a harp. So that's our trig ratios. Now in this question, we're not going to be using any of them that involve the adjacent. So we can cross off tan and we can cross off cos. So this question, we're going to be using sine. So to find the size of this angle, we're going to be using the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of the angle, so sine x, so the sine of that angle, is equal to the opposite. Now the opposite in this question is 15, so it's 15 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 20. So we've got the sine of this angle is equal to 15 20 of so three quarters or 0.75 if you've cancelled it down. But this angle is obviously not equal to 15 20 of of a degree. That's the sine of the angle. So if we want to get rid of the sine, we're going to have to do the inverse sine. That's the inverse operation, the inverse sine. So x, the size of the angle, is the equal to the inverse sine of 15 20 ths. So on our calculator, we'll just press shift and then we'll press sign, and then we'll press the fraction button, and type in 15 20 ths, and press equals, and that's it. And then we get that x is equal to 48.59 degrees to two decimal places. So the size of this angle to two decimal places would be 48.59 degrees to two decimal places. And that's it. So let's have a look at one now for you to try yourself. So we've got a question here. It's a right angle triangle. We've got this length is four centimeters. This length is nine centimeters. Can you work out the size of this angle? So press pause and try this question now yourself. Okay, so if I was doing this question, the first thing I would do is label the sides. So we've got the hypotenuse, the one opposite the right angles. The one opposite the angle is equal to the opposite. So this is the opposite, opposite the angle. And then finally, we've got the lateral other side here. That's going to be the adjacent. And let's jot down our trigger ratio. So two old angels skipped over heaven carrying a harp. So we want to find the size of this angle. Now in this question, we've got the adjacent. We're using that. We've got the hypotenuse and we're using that. We're not using the opposite. We're not trying to find the opposite so we can cross that off. And then we can cross off any trig ratio that uses the opposite. So we're crossing off tan and we're crossing off sign. So in this question, we're going to be using cos. So that's the cos x, the cos of an angle is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So in this question, we've got the cos x, so cos x is equal to the adjacent, which is 4 
divided by the hypotenuse, which is 9. So we've got the cos of this angle is equal to 4 ninths. Now this angle is obviously not equal to 4 ninths of a degree. So we want to find the angle, so we need to do the inverse cos. So x is equal to the inverse cos of 4 ninths. And if we do that on our calculator, we press shift cos, so shift cos, and then type in 4 ninths, we get that's equal to, x is equal to, 63.612 degrees to the three decimal places, to three decimal places, and that's it. So sometimes with trigonometry, rather than finding the size of an angle, we might need to find the length of a side. So here we've got a right angle triangle. We've got the height of the triangle is five kilometers, so it's quite a big triangle. We've got the size of this angle is 60 degrees, and we want to find the size of this length here, x. So again, let's label our sides. So here's the angle, so the side opposite it, the side opposite it is the opposite. The side opposite the right angle is equal to the hypotenuse. And then the side that's left is the adjacent. So that means that the 5 is the adjacent. So I've jotted down the trig ratios. It's Sokator or two old angels skipped over heaven carrying a harp. Now in this question, we're trying to find the opposite. So we're using that. That's involved in the question. We've got the adjacent. And we've not been asked for. We're not using the hypotenuse. So we can cross that off. So we can cross off any of the trig ratios that use the hypotenuse. So we're not using sine. We're not using cos. In this question, we're going to be using tan. So that's our trig ratio. Now let's substitute in our values. So the tan of the angles, so that's going to be the tan of 60 degrees is equal to the opposite, so the opposite is equal to x, divided by the adjacent, and that's equal to 5. So we've got the tan of 60 degrees is equal to the opposite over adjacent, so, so we've got the tan of 60 is equal to x divided by 5. Now in this question, we want to find the length of this side, x, so we want to get rid of this divide by 5. So this is an equation, we just need to solve it. So to get x on its own, we're going to get rid of the divide by 5, so we're going to times by 5, and times by 5, and we're going to find the tan of 60, and I'm including brackets here, that's quite important that you include brackets, multiplied by 5 is equal to x. And then if we just do it on our calculator, the tan of 60 multiplied by 5, we get tan of 60, close brackets, multiplied by 5, is equal to 5 root 3, or 8.66025, and so on. So we've got the x is equal to 8.66 kilometers, two decimal places. And that's it. So in this question, we find the length of a side. Okay, so let's have a look at question now for you to try yourself. So feel free to pause the video and to try this question to find the length of this side x. Okay, so the first step is to label the side. So opposite the angle is the opposite. Opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. And then that means the other side is the adjacent. And then let's jot down our trig ratios. So we've got the so we've got the tan is equal to the opposite over adjacent, the sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, and the cos is equal to the adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So there are trig ratios. And let's look at our question again. So we're trying to find the opposite. We've been given the hypotenuse. We're not using or trying to find the adjacent, so we can cross that off. I wouldn't cross off any of the trig ratios that they use the adjacent. So in this question, we're going to be dealing with sine. So we've got the sine of the angle, so that's the sine of 36 degrees, is equal to the opposite, which is x, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 8. Now in this question, we want to find x, so we want to get the x on its own, so we want to get rid of this divide by 8. So let's multiply both sides of our equation by 8, so we're going to get the sine of 36, and make sure you close brackets, and multiply by 8 is equal to x. So now let's work this out and see what we get. So the sine of 36, close brackets, multiply by 8 is equal to 4.70228 and so on, and that's equal to x. So that means that x is equal to 4.702 centimeters to three decimal places, and that's it. That's the length of that side x. That's it. Okay, let's have a look at another one. So here we've got a right angle triangle, and we're trying to find the length of the hypotenuse x. So again, let's label the sides. So opposite the angle is the opposite. Opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse, and the side that's left is the adjacent. Jot down our trig ratios. So we've jotted down our trig ratios. The tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, and cos is equal to the adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Now in this question, we're not using, we're trying to find the adjacent, so we can cross that off, and we can cross off any of our trig ratios that use the adjacent. So in this question, we're going to be using sine. So we've got the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite divided by hypotenuse. So the sine of the angle, so that's the sine of 20 degrees, is equal to the opposite, so that's 3, divided by the hypotenuse, which is x. So we want to solve this equation. Now, x is on the denominator, and I don't like equations where x is on the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by x to begin with. So I'm going to multiply the left-hand side by x, and I'm going to multiply the right-hand side of the equation by x. And I'm doing that so I get rid of this x on the denominator. So on the left-hand side, we've got the sine of 20 degrees, close brackets, multiplied by x. And then on the right-hand side, we had 3 divided by x, we times by x, so that gets rid of the divide by x, so we're just left with 3. Now here we've got the sine of 20 degrees times x is equal to 3. We don't want this sine of 20 degrees here, we want to get x on its own. So let's divide both sides by the sine of 20 degrees. So divide by the sine of 20 and divide by the sine of 20. And whenever we do that on the left-hand side, we'd just be left with x. And on the right-hand side, we've got 3 divided by the sine of 20, so that's 3 over the sine 
of 20 degrees. And that's it. And we can just type this into our calculator. We can do 3 divided by the sine of 20 degrees. Just make sure you close brackets there. And you get that x is equal to 8.771432 and so on centimeters. So the length of this side to two decimal places would be 8.77 centimeters to two decimal places. And that's the length of the hypotenuse. And that's it. Okay, so let's have a look at two more questions. So here's our first one. We've got this rectangle, A, B, C, D. And I want you to begin with to find the length of C, D. So can you please pause this video and to find the length of CD. Use trigonometry to find the length of this side here, CD. Okay, so the first thing I would do is if I was trying to find the length of this side CD, well, I'd notice that if it's a rectangle, that that's a right angle. So this is a right angle triangle. And we've got the size of an angle and one of the lengths of the side. So we can then use trigonometry to work out the length of this side here, CD. So let's label the sides. If this is the right angle, the side opposite it is the hypotenuse. That's the hypotenuse. If this is the 40 degree angle, the side opposite it is the opposite. And the side that's left is the adjacent. So we've got a right angle triangle and we want to find the length of this side here, CD. So we want to find the length of the adjacent. We've got the hypotenuse and we're not using or trying to find the opposite at this point here. So we're just going to cross that off. So let's write down our trig ratios. So we've got the tan is equal to opposite divided by adjacent. The sine is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse and the cos is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. In this question, as we've said, we're not using or trying to find the opposite. We're trying to find the adjacent and we've been given the hypotenuse. So we can cross off any of the trig ratios using the opposite. So we're not using tan and we're not using sine we're using cos. So let's write that down. The cos of the angle, the cos of 40 degrees, is equal, equal to the adjacent. So let's just call that x for the minute. So x over the hypotenuse, which is 9. So we've got the cos of 40 degrees is equal to x over 9. Now we don't want this to divide by 9. We just want to get x on its own to find the length of this side. So we're just going to multiply both sides by 9. So multiply by 9 and multiply by 9. So the left-hand side would be the cos of 40 degrees multiply by 9, and the right-hand side would just be x. So we just need to do cos of 40, multiply by 9 on our calculator. So x is equal to 6.894 and so on centimeters. And that's it. So the length of CD, this length here, is equal to 6.894 and so on centimeters. Now I'm not rounding it yet. You may have rounded that to one or two decimal places, but I just want to show you the next part of the question. So the next part of the question is to find the area of rectangle ABCD. So to find the area of this rectangle ABCD. So if you want to have a go at that now, feel free to pause the video and to find the area of rectangle ABCD. And in a second, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so let's look at how to find the area of rectangle ABCD. And I've just changed color of ink here to green, so I'm going to be using green ink here. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of this rectangle. So to find the area of this rectangle, well, we need to find the area of a rectangle is the length multiplied by the width. So we've got the length of the rectangle, that's CD or DC. And what would be great is if we can find the width of the rectangle, and that's the height of that triangle we were just looking at. And there's a couple of different ways we could do that. We could use trigonometry, so we could use the 40 degree angle we've got, the hypotenuse. And then this time, we can, instead of finding the adjacent, we could find the opposite. So we'd we'll be using sine, and we can do it that way. Or we could just use Pythagoras' theorem, because obviously here we've got a right angle triangle. We know the length of two of the sides, and we can use Pythagoras to find the length of the other one. And I'm actually going to use Pythagoras here, just to show you that actually sometimes you're going to be using trigonometry and Pythagoras in the same question. So here we've got this triangle. So just drawing a quick sketch of the triangle. So we've got our length of the base, which is 6.89439998 and so on. And we've got the length of the hypotenuse. This longer side is 9 centimeters. And we want to find the height of it, this length here. So let's label our sides. So let's call it A. B and the longer side of it C. So we've got Pythagoras theorem A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared, well that's what we're trying to find, let's call that A squared plus B squared, which would be our 6.894 and so on squared. I'm not rounding that, it's still on my calculator display. And that is equal to C squared, so it's going to be 9 squared. And then whenever we work that out, we get A squared plus, and then whenever we square this, and I've, on my calculator, I've just pressed squared, answer squared, and that equals 47.5327 and so on. And that equals a 9 squared is equal to 81. So we've got A squared plus 47.5327 and so on equals 81. If we now just take away this 47.5327 and so on from both sides of the equation, so we're going to take it away from the left-hand side, and we're also going to take it away from the right-hand side of the equation. So on the left-hand side, we'll be left with a squared. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to do 81, subtract answer, and that gives me 33.467248 and so on. So we've got a squared is equal to 33.46 and so on. So this length of side obviously is in 33 and so on centimeters. We're going to need to square root it. So a is equal to the square root of 33.467 and so on. So we're going to do the square root of answer on our calculator, and we get that a is equal to 5.785 and so on centimeters. 
Now in this question, we were asked to find the area of the rectangle. So we've now found the length of the side, which is 5.785 and so on. So we want to find the area of this rectangle, A, B, C, D. So we just need to multiply the length, which is our 6.8494 and so on, by our width, which is 5.785 and so on. And that'll give us the area of the rectangle. So the area would be equal to the length multiplied by the width. So the length is 6.894 and so on. We're going to multiply that by the, the width, which is 5.785 and so on. And that'll give us the area. So when we do that, we get an answer of 39.8847 and so on centimetres squared. And I'm going to round that to two decimal places. So to two decimal places, it'll be 39.88 centimetres squared. And that's the area of the rectangle. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at one last question. So this time we've got two right angle triangles attached to each other. So we've got the right angle triangle BCD and we've got the right angle triangle ABD. And so we've got these two right angle triangles and we want to find the sides of this angle here X. So what I want you to do is pause the video now and see if you can figure out how to find the sides of this angle X. And actually, just before I go through the answer, actually, if you just want a bit of a hint on this question, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the right angle triangle below, and you're going to find the length of BD to begin with using trigonometry once. And then you're going to look at the right angle triangle above. And then once you know the length of BD, you can use trigonometry again to find the size of that angle. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to focus on this right angle triangle below to begin with. So we want to find the length of BD. Because if we can find the length of BD, then we can use it above in this triangle to find the size of the angle. So for this triangle here, if this is the 65 degree angle, the side opposite it is the opposite. So that's the opposite. We've got the right angle triangle. So the side opposite that is the hypotenuse. And then the other side is the adjacent. And we've got our trig ratios. So there are trig ratios. And if we have a look at this question, we've, we're going to be using the hypotenuse. That's the 7 centimeters. We're going to have to use that. We're trying to find the opposite. We're not trying to find and we're not using the adjacent so we can cross that off. So we're not going to be using tan and we're not going to be using the cos. We're going to be using sine for this triangle here to find the length of BD. So let's do that. So we've got the sine of the angle, so the sine of 65 degrees, and I'm just putting in brackets, and that's equal to the opposite. So the opposite in this question, I'm just going to call it the opposite, opposite, over uh, the hypotenuse, which is 7, so over 7. Now we want to find out what the opposite is, so we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 7. So we're going to multiply the left-hand side by 7, and multiply the right-hand side by 7. So the left-hand side will become the sine of 65, multiplied by 7. And then on the right-hand side, we're just left with the opposite. So if we do the sine of 65, close brackets, so the sine of 65, close brackets, multiply by 7, 6.3441545099 and so on centimeters. So that's the length of the opposite. So that means the length of DB, this side here, is 6.34415 and so on centimeters. And I'm avoiding rounding it at this point because I'm going to be using that again. So I'm going to show that it's not rounding it. So 6.34415 four, one, five, and so on centimeters. So that's fantastic. So if we now have a look at this top right angle triangle. We've now got a right angle triangle and we know the lengths of two sides. So we can use trigonometry again to find the size of this angle, which is fantastic. So let's do that. So let's now look at the triangle on the top and I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. So the triangle on the top, this is the angle here of X. So the side opposite is the opposite. The side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. And then the side down here would now be the adjacent. So we need to relabel these because we're now looking at different triangles. So we've got the opposite, the hypotenuse, and then we've got the adjacent. So let's drop down our trigger ratios. So we want to find the size of this angle. So we're going to be using the adjacent. We're going to be using the hypotenuse. We're not using the opposite. So we can cross off tan or we can cross off sine. So in this question, we're going to be using cos. The cos of the angle, cos x, is equal to the adjacent. That's our 6.344 and so on. And it's still on my calculator display divided by the hypotenuse which is 10. Now if you do 6 point something divided by 10 that's 0 point something. This angle is obviously not 0 point something. So we want to find the size of the angle so we need to do the inverse cos. So x is equal to the inverse cos and you do that by pressing shift cos in your calculator and then in brackets 6.344 and so on over 10 and close brackets. And on my calculator I'm just going to press shift cos press the fraction button I'm going to press answer because that's already on my answer display or you can type it in if you wanted to over 10 and then press the right and close brackets and press equals and I get that's equal to 50.62 and so on degrees or rounding it to two decimal places would be 50.62 degrees to two decimal places and that's it. So that's it. In the description below, I've put a link to the trigonometry questions and I'd highly, highly recommend that you do those trigonometry questions just because the more practice you do on a topic like this, the better, you know, labeling the sides, using your you know, soccer tour, tool, then just skipped over here and carrying a harper and so on and working out those questions. But I hope you find this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I just want to say at this point, um, obviously, you know, keep up the hard work. You're doing fantastically well. Remember things like the five a days. 
but also have a look in school and see if there's any opportunities that are coming up. For instance, are there any revision days coming up or sessions after school that you can avail of? And any extra revision you can do between now and the exams, the better. But keep up the hard work and I'll, I'll see you in the next one. So 90 days will be obviously tomorrow at three o'clock. Okay, cheers, bye.